This video is video one for convergence and the reshaping of mass communication. So the first thing to acknowledge is that media industries are really in turmoil right now. Why are they in turmoil? They're in turmoil because media consumption is down in regards to old media. So when I ask a class these days, how many of you went to the movies this weekend, or how many of you subscribed to the SF Chronicle, or even how many of you watched TV last night, I'm gonna see far fewer hands get raised than 10 years ago. So we don't consume media, or at least old media, the way we used to. However, that's not all bad news. We consume a lot more media now. In fact, our consumption has gone up. If you're between eight and 18, likely you spend 10 hours and 45 minutes a day or more on consuming media. And you do this because of media multitasking. You may not know what that means, but you all do it. So you may be watching a YouTube video while simultaneously checking on your iPhone, your Instagram account. Or you might be sitting at home, you know, on a night watching television, but at the same time have your laptop on your, you know, on you while you're watching or checking your Facebook page. So we all do, you know, this where we're consuming more than one branch of the media um, at the same time. So that's allowed us to consume a lot more media. The dilemma is that how media have traditionally made money on this is by having as many eyeballs as possible or ears as possible watching or listening to a particular advertisement. So it used to be that we'd all turn on, you know, either ABC, CBS, or NBC, or later Fox, and there'd be a mass audience watching those ads in between the show. But now, if I, if I questioned you guys what you did last night, you will have all consumed different media. Some of you would be checking your Instagram all night. Some of you guys would be on YouTube. Some of you would be watching television. Some of you would be playing a video game. So the dilemma is how to capture not just an audience, but a mass audience when the audience itself is becoming increasingly fragmented. That is, the audience is going to a lot of different types of media rather than concentrating on, you know, television that night or all going to a movie this weekend. So that's a real dilemma for media industries because if they can't make money, then they risk going out of business. So they either have to change or some media will, will in a sense, die. So we really have to also reconsider the mass communication process because as inter the internet and convergence has come about, it's changed all facets of the internet. I mean, I'm sorry, of, <laughs> of the mass communication process. So before we talked about the, the linear uh, model for interpersonal communication, as well as the, you know, the circular model about interpersonal communication, and then we looked at how mass communication looks, that traditional model of mass communication. Well, that's really changed because now interpreter A, the content producer, is not necessarily a hierarchical um, organization full of many people. It's not necessarily uh, an organization like the New York Times or CBS. In fact, it could be you sitting at home, you know, creating content for your beauty channel that thousands of people see. So it could literally be one person. The message has also really changed. Before, the message you know, went out to a mass audience and it was largely unalterable. If the newspaper got printed, that's what got printed. Um, you know, your favorite television show didn't change endings depending on the audience. But nowadays, the message, because of the internet, can be really, um, it can be really idiosyncratic and it can be really uh, targeted towards a smaller audience and it can be really personal. So, for example, rather than you're picking up the SF Chronicle or the New York Times, you might have um, a, an RSS reader and draw from the internet content from a bunch of different blogs or a bunch of different news sites that you like and in a sense have a personalized online newspaper for yourself. Um, we, we get blog channels or we get, I'm sorry, we get YouTube channels that are all really targeted to specific types of audiences. Like maybe you watch something about a specific video game or I might watch something about how to organize bedrooms, whatever. So the message can, is, has really changed in that sense. And also the, 
the feedback in interpreter B, you know, traditionally known as the audience, that's changed too, because now our audiences, we know the audience so much better. It's so much more, it's so much closer to us. We can ask the audience questions. We can tweet to an audience and say, hey, what do you guys want me to talk about on my YouTube channel this week or whatever. And feedback has become instantaneous. It's no longer delayed. Um, and it's not as infer inferential if we can directly talk to our audience. Okay, um, one more thing. That's just to say that the result, of course, is that, well, really, we don't know what the result is yet. If you can figure it out, you'll probably be the next billionaire. But it means everything is in flux and everything is changing. And if you can figure out how companies, new companies can make money on the internet, you'll be very, very rich. I'm going to end this here so that and do a video on the next part.